Bienvenue au bureau, and welcome to another socially distant episode of Wheels Wings TV. You may have detected a distinct French flavor to today's video, and that is because we are having a long overdue look at Tamiya's new French light tank, the Renault R35. Additionally, we are going to be finishing this kit with the much-hyped new AK Interactive third-generation acrylic paints. So, without further ado, allons-y! Assembly starts with the lower hull, which has been done in a flat pack style and fits together fuss free with the bottom, front, back, left, right, and a supporting middle section which keeps everything square and true. This is followed by the upper hull with its very nice cast texture. Pay attention at this point as there are two holes either side of the turret ring that need to be drilled out to accept some eyelets later on. We will attach the upper glacius before mating the upper and lower hull sections, followed by the front driver's hatch. I would have liked to have seen a partial driver figure to complement the commander in this kit. Next up, we can assemble the suspension bogies, and it's here that we see some of Tamiya's famously clever engineering. The axles on the interface of the bogies and the corresponding holes in the road wheels are tapered. This means the wheels will only go on one way. Limits to injection molding mean you can't actually have a perfect 90 degree draw on parts, and Tamiya have used this to advantage. It's things like this that make Tamiya kits such a joy to build. They just go together, and if it doesn't fit, what did you do wrong? Much like the running gear, we are going to assemble the exhaust and leave it separate to facilitate easier painting and weathering later on. Make sure to remove the end of the exhaust pipe where it plugs into the rear of the tank so that you can fit it in place under its armored cover. Now with most of our hull components complete, we turn our attention to the beautifully molded turret. I'm pretty sure I've seen two bite brownies that are bigger than this thing. Now time for the fun part, tracks. To me I have gone with Lincoln Link style tracks in this kit, which in my opinion is the best compromise between detail and ease of assembly. With the first side done, the opposite side goes together very quickly.
with all of our initial assembly work done, it's now time to tidy up some unwanted seams on the turret and the upper hull. These areas will be treated with Mr. Surfacer 500 and will be textured to blend these areas in with the molded in cast texture. Some people may wish to retexture the entire upper hull and turret, however, I felt that the molded in texture was perfectly adequate. A few swipes with a fine sanding sponge to smooth down the rougher areas, and we can call this done and ready for some paint. As I said earlier, we are going to be using the new third generation water based acrylic paints from AK Interactive, as well as their new accompanying primer and thinner. This primer can, with effort, be airbrushed right from the bottle, however I do recommend thinning to suit your airbrush in style. I will say that either way, this primer lays down very well, dries to the touch relatively quickly, and levels itself out very well, just like the ever-popular Badger Steiner Res or Ammo One-Shot Primer. A word of note, the bottle does say to let this primer dry for 24 hours, and if you need to do some sanding or need to handle the model lot or it's relatively humid, I would suggest waiting longer still. Once completely cured, this primer does seem as resilient as Stino Res, but I will say Stino Res dries to that tough finish much quicker. That being said, after a day or two, both are impervious to masking tape and are relatively resistant to scratching and rubbing off. I will say that this new AK 3rd Gen Primer is a very close second place behind the Steiner Res One-Shot Primers, but it is vastly superior to some of the other acrylic primers on the market. With all of our parts wearing a nice even coat of matte black, we can start on the painting proper. We have chosen option B, which is a vehicle of the 23rd Combat Tank Battalion in June of 1940. This vehicle has a four-color camouflage scheme, which is much more sane than a five-color camouflage scheme. Our first color is Command Green, which we will apply with the airbrush. Three parts thinner to one part paint give good results with my 0.2mm Iwata HPB Plus at between 15 and 20 PSI. Your mileage may of course vary. As with any new paint, I suggest experimenting to find out what mixing ratios work best with your painting style and your airbrush setup. Just like the primer, this paint has excellent coverage and dries relatively quickly to a beautiful matte finish. The pleasant surprise with this paint is the almost non-existent occurrence of tip dry. Other popular water-based acrylics are notorious for paint accumulating very quickly on the tip of the needle, causing all kinds of annoyances. However, this paint sprays almost as nicely as Tamiya's acrylics. In terms of airbrush application, this is a paint you could load on Sunday and spray all week. Time now to hang up the airbrush, grab a hairbrush, and really put these paints to the test. We will first start with green ochre by sketching the outline of the pattern before filling in the area with subsequent layers. Do not drive yourself crazy trying to exactly match the diagram and the instructions. A reasonable facsimile is often much less stressful than an exact replication. As you can see, I'm using a relatively large brush. Don't make the mistake of using a very fine brush for this kind of work. A larger brush with a sharp point will serve better. We follow up with faded green. And finally, dark brown. Now with our colors blocked in, we come to the part that should not be completed after your morning espresso or by those with heart conditions. For our black outlines, we have switched to a smaller brush and are using rubber black mixed with a small amount of retarder. This will keep the paint from drying on the brush too quickly and giving us smoother lines because we don't have to stop and clean and reload the brush. While the black is on the palette, we will also take care of the road wheels and some of the suspension components.
With our initial painting finished, we give the whole model a light coat of all clad aqua gloss, and once dry, we can proceed with decal application. My preferred setting solution is Walther's Solvaset, which I apply underneath as well as on top of the decals. This is a very strong decal setting solution and works well with the thicker Tamiya decals, although I will say these ones do seem a lot thinner than previous generations of Tamiya decal sheets. While our decal setup, we are going to take care of the exhaust. We will be following Uncle Night Shift's school of exhaust painting here, which starts with painting the exhaust in a lighter gray, followed by a layer of chipping fluid, in this case, AK Interactive Worn Effects, which is then followed by a layer of darker gray. With a stout brush and water, we chip away until we are exhausted. Finally, we selectively apply ammo, rust streaking effect, and a light rust wash, et voila! We have a nice, well-worn exhaust pipe for relatively little extra effort. After selectively picking out a few details with a dark enamel wash, and with all of our painting complete, we give the model an even coat of ungloss, in this case, Tester's dull coat thinned equal parts with Tamiya lacquer thinner. With the dull coat dry, we grab a bottle of metallic pigment and highlight the worn areas of the tracks. So far, the best tool I've found for this task is the standard issue Mark I finger. Simply pick up some pigment on your fingertip and rub it onto the tracks, giving the exposed parts a gleaming metal finish. This is followed with some of AK's gun metal paint for the exposed metal on the idler wheel and the drive sprocket. After a few last minute touch ups, we join our various tank parts into a completed vehicle and we can call our R35 Fini. This kit holds to Tamiya's usual standards of excellence and is easily a kit that could be completed to an acceptable finish over a long weekend. Or for that matter, a regular weekend. This kit would be completely suitable to a novice builder and would serve as a good introduction into assembly type tracks. For the more advanced builder, this kit offers a quick, relaxing build that will restore your faith in humanity in between over-engineered dragon kits. So, I have to say I am very impressed with the R35 kit. No surprises there, as it does say, Tamiya on the box. With regards to AK's new 3rd gen acrylics, I think they've hit it out of the park with these things. They airbrush very well, they brush paint very well, and there are very few other types of paint that I have used that I can say work well with both types of application. They dry to a wonderful matte finish, and even without weathering or clear coats, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference between an airbrushed area and a brush painted area. I think if AK could start incorporating this formula into their existing acrylic lines, this could be a very popular paint indeed, as by giving the modeler matches to Federal Standard, RAL, and RLM colors, this could very well be the last paint you will ever need at least in terms of a water-based acrylic. To summarize, well done Tamiya. As always, very well done AK Interactive. Bon chance, mes amis. Now where's that dragon kit?